Hey, hey there, wife. Hello there, husband. I gotta tell you, I am very excited to be doing this bonus episode. Yes, and the game, of course, is Koi. We haven't done a full episode on this game because as part of our mission, we like to feature games that are accessible. And this one is really hard to find. It's out of print, and I don't think they plan on ever doing any reprints of it. This game comes from the Smirk and Dagger slash Smirk and Laughter crew. I was able to talk to the designer and uh, he confirmed with me this game's not getting reprinted. It didn't hit the sales numbers they wanted and so whatever copies of Koi are out there, that's what's out there. All that being said, we love this game and we thought it was worth at least doing a bonus mini episode so you guys can get a little bit of insight to what this game is when we mention it for another million times on our episodes. Yeah, maybe somebody will track it down and grab a copy. You never know. But Jessica, let's dive in and talk about Koi. Koi is a movement game about koi fish in a pond trying to eat as many dragonflies and occasionally frogs as they can to earn the most points. So your koi fish is moving around in a pond that's made up of hexagonal spaces. And the way you move around is by playing cards from the movement deck. And each card has actions on it, multiple actions that will allow you to either change the direction your fish is facing or to move your fish forward in some way. So the strategy is really in playing the cards in a way that's going to allow you to reach the dragonflies or frogs sometimes that you're trying to eat and avoiding obstacles that might be in your way, such as other koi fish or stones in the pond. Throughout the game, players also have an opportunity to add other elements to the pond that might change the way things move around or even produce more dragonflies. The game is played over seven rounds, which represents seven days, and each of the seven days, except for the first one, has a different random weather condition assigned to it, and this will affect the way that play works throughout that round, and it makes the game really interesting and kind of different every time. So I think for me, why I enjoy this game so much, a lot of it just has to do with the atmosphere of the game. The artwork has a lot to do with the atmosphere, but this is a very calm game. It's got these soft pastel colors. It's got these really beautiful looking fish and frogs and lily pads. It brings out an atmosphere of calm and tranquility. And when you're sitting there playing it, you're just kind of feeling pretty chill. I think the calm is kind of the point a little bit. I mean, obviously it is the point, but I mean, it's a very strategic game. It's a very thinky game, but it's not like a frustrating, highly competitive game. I mean, it is competitive, but it's more like you're relaxing in a pond while you're just thinking through what your next move is going to be. Yeah, you're just trying to move your little fish around and eat all the dragonflies. No, there's a frog. I'll pick him up. It takes away that edge. Not enough to kill the competition, but just enough for you to kind of enjoy yourself while you're playing in a really calm way, and I like that. I will say the game does a pretty good job at staying balanced. It does have that mechanic where you rotate the first player, which I think is really important in a game like this because otherwise you'd have the first player is always eating, you know, all the easiest dragonflies and then everyone else is left with scraps. So when that's alternating, everybody kind of has to... Uh, play behind or play from behind at least some of the time right but at the same time there's just a little bit more luck to it than skill because you can only work with the cards in your hand and even though there is a lot of skill to seeing opportunities that somebody else might not see in the same set of cards there's also a lot of likelihood that the cards you need just aren't there i found it helpful in cases like that where your cards aren't very great or you're not going to get a whole lot of dragonflies this round to kind of help set you up for the next round. So you can put more lily pads around your fish and those lily pads get replenished with dragonflies at the start of every round. And so you can start the next turn with a bunch of dragonflies around you. I think when we played the four player game, I initially, I really neglected the lily pads and you took advantage of those. And I think that gave you a good leg up. I was thinking like, what's this going to do for me now? But I wasn't really thinking in the long term, like, oh, this is going to be something that I can easily grab in the next round, or it's going to put more dragonflies out there so that we're not all chasing the same ones on the same, you know, corner of the board. 
Well, yeah, because the game starts out in a four-player game with five lily pads for dragonflies to spawn off of. In a two-player game, it's three. And if you're not laying down lily pads, it just becomes a race for those five dragonflies only. And you'll find yourself very concentrated in one part of the pond, not going anywhere else, no matter what the weather effect has, no matter what the cherry blossoms do. Your game kind of just stays centered around those three to five pieces. And so putting lily pads out there, it expands the action of the pond. And I think that's kind of what the designers were going for. They wanted the fish all over the pond. They wanted things all over the pond. And so laying down lily pads and putting more opportunities for dragonflies out there will allow that. You also have the option of laying down stones throughout the lake. And these stones have to be jumped over or moved around. You can't swim through them, obviously. And so this could put a damper, albeit a slight damper, on your opponent's fishes as they're trying to move towards their goals. I know that I did block you up pretty good the last time we played with a really, really well-placed stone. I don't think you got the dragonflies you were after. Oh, no. I All of my movement cards were just moving straight. None of them allowed me to change direction, and that stone was right in my path, so I was pretty much stuck where I was. But you also have the cherry blossom pieces, which will shove everything away from it. And so strategically placing those when you have them can shove dragonflies right into your fish's mouth. It can shove your fish to a more advantageous position before you start laying down your direction cards. But again, though, you have to have them in your hand to begin with. Yeah, I think part of the fun, though, is figuring out how to use those cards. I know when I first started playing this game, I just kind of ignored a lot of the nature cards. The cherry blossoms were obvious to me because, you know, you can push your fish into a dragonfly or push a dragonfly into your fish. But something like the stones, it's a little bit more thoughtful, right? You're trying to put an obstacle in the way of your opponent and you have no idea what they've got in their hand. So it's really kind of more of a gamble or, you know, what's going to be the most likely to trip them up without screwing me up later because they don't move. They stay there for Forever, so you could be screwing yourself over in a later round. I noticed that the stones were far more effective when there were four players on the board instead of just two. They seemed to be a lot more easily maneuvered around when you had just two players on the board than when there was four. Because with four players, there's a lot more out there. There's a lot more going on. And therefore, there's a lot more opportunities to block paths that people might have needed. Another thing you can do that I didn't really realize until kind of later in my tenure of playing this game, I should say, is the frogs. Now, the frogs are cards that you have the opportunity to play. You can put a frog anywhere in the pond. And the trick is if you put it next to a dragonfly, it will eat it. And if you put it next to a lily pad, then no dragonfly can spawn on that lily pad because the frog's always going to eat it. And I always thought that's just annoying, right? Like you want the dragonflies. So why would you put a frog there? But then I realized you can use a frog if you don't have a card that's going to help you get to a dragonfly. You can put a frog next to a dragonfly that your opponent might want and stop them from being able to get those points. Yeah, and, and we're, we're talking about strategies in this game now to kind of counter the fact that a lot of what happens for players basically comes from how lucky they can get on the draw of the movement cards. I think that's the, the, the reason people complained about this game so much. Like for as much as we like it, I can look objectively at like what other people said. You're all playing from the same deck of movement cards and they're, you know, dealt out at the start of each round. Somebody's going to get luckier than you or sometimes you're going to get luckier than others. And the lily pads and the dragonflies just so happen to fall in a way that benefit your cards, but not the other guys and the weather might help you too. I get where people have a problem with it in that regard. I did know this when we played too, that once a player took a commanding lead, let's say six points or more, it became really, really hard to catch up to them. There are some kind of miraculous combinations of cards that can allow you to score an insane amount of points in one turn but it's very rare and so when somebody has that opportunity where they go and get you know three dragonflies in one turn it's very hard for anyone to catch up to that because it's just so unlikely I feel like most of the time when I play I'm kind of staying at pace with my opponent we're each getting 
one or no dragonflies every turn. You know, it's kind of your whole strategy is just to kind of turn around and get one. But if you can get a whole bunch all at once, you basically are set for the rest of the game. Well, the thing I noticed when one of us, well, let's be real, when you started taking a really, really big lead that I couldn't catch up from, it was in the weather cards. If you have a favorable weather event happen for you, that can really be where the separation is. It definitely can. I think most of the weather cards impact everyone kind of the same, I think. But there are certain events where, depending where you are on the board and what you've got going on, it can really swing things one way or another for a certain player. Definitely felt more in a two-player game as well because the weather event usually tends to favor the first player because they get all the options right away. They can move the frogs or they can move the lily pads or whatever the the weather allows them to do. They get to do it first. I'm starting to see why people didn't take to this game very much. You're talking about moving your fish, collecting points, but the movements are based on cards you get and the guy sitting next to you could have better cards than you all game. I'm not knocking Koi for that. I'm just saying I realize it now. I still love this game. I think it's the atmosphere. I think it's the style. I think it's just kind of fun to do, even if you're not the one catching all the dragonflies. It just, something about it to me just seems so fun. I think it's a really good challenge. I like the way it makes my brain work. Again, it's going to depend on your personal preferences. But yeah, if you're not a fan of the luck mechanic, it's definitely not going to be a favorite for you. Jessica, I enjoy the hell out of this game. I, it has its flaws, no doubt. We've just talked about all of them, but I enjoy it. I do too. I think it's it's just so beautiful and so tranquil and a puzzling in a relaxing way, which is rare to find. Usually games that make you think really hard are stressful, and this game is not that at all. This game gets you thinking, but it's very calm in the process. For me, it's a shame that copies of this game are hard to find, but we have a copy. That, that's good enough for me. I look forward to playing this many years down the road with you. That'll do it. Thanks so much for listening. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.